an example of how each of them would actually one example of how uh, the executive for example can hold the judiciary or the legislature to account and, and vice versa um, the executive has a role in the appointment of, of, of judges um, and then the judiciary equally has the power to actually uh, hold the executive accountable through the process of what we call judicial review so where a public body acts for example in excess of the powers given to them or contrary to law the judiciary is there to provide redress and to hold them to, to account. Um, the legislature, on the other hand, uh, is there uh, to, to, for example, pass laws. And it is the legislature that would normally pass the law that would state the retirement age for judges, for example. Now, the executive can also hold the legislature to account in the sense that uh, all acts of parliament require the blessing of the president by way of presidential assent before, before they are considered as as, as, as law. Um, and then equally, uh, the judiciary can hold the legislature to account by declaring um, acts of parliament unconstitutional, where there is evidence and there is proof that the legislature has acted in excess of the powers conferred on them by the constitution. So each of them has a bit of a catch on the other. And that is healthy. That is healthy for an open, free and democratic society. So we should not see it as, uh, I know usually it's the executive that would catch the headlines and then everything else, because it's made up of the president, the ministers, and, and other public institutions that derive their authority um, from, from them. Um, but the reality on paper is that they're all co-equal um, branches of, of state, and none of them should be seen to be uh, more powerful or more important than the other. They all have a fundamental role to play. Um, as far as the, the running of the affairs of the country is, is actually concerned.